welcome to the Pre-Snap Podcast presented by Line Star. All things fantasy football and a sprinkle of sports betting analysis alongside Tyler Weeman. I'm Shannon Somerville. On today's show, we've got daily fantasy football projections. One player who's one of the most popular in fantasy football this weekend who we actually think you should completely steer clear of, plus touchdown calls of week three. You don't want to miss it. Tyler, week three coming up. We've got a great mm-hmm. slate. We sure do. It's another exciting one. Unlike last week, we have all the top quarterbacks going. Speaking of quarterbacks, thanks for that transition there. We're going to take a look at each position and go over the high-owned players in fantasy and also the low-owned, the sleeper picks to give you the best value this weekend in daily fantasy. It's also good if you're placing prop bets as well. You can use the same analysis for that and your season-long fantasy. So let's get right to it. We're going to start off with the quarterback, and we're looking at Josh Allen at the Dolphins this week. Very highly owned for good reason. We saw what he's capable of with that offense. Absolute slaughter on Monday night football. And going up against the Dolphins, who've given up the fourth most fantasy points to quarterbacks. Given the ownership is high on him, though, what's your assessment of him from a daily fantasy perspective? You know, we did. We stated that it's the fourth most uh, points to the quarterback position. And that really is just from Lamar Jackson because we know the week prior, Mac Jones didn't do much. Right. So those stats may be a little bit skewed here, but we're talking Josh Allen. Mm -hmm. It's one of the highest games of the week. We know that team, even if it gets to a big lead, is going to keep throwing. And if it's a close game, that means Allen uses his legs more, which just gives him more upside here. So I do like this game. I like Josh Allen. Really hard to... uh, ever say to fade Josh Allen. <laughs> right. He's the favorite for Super Bowl MVP for a reason. <laughs> hey, he's He's been great this season, and he's probably going to continue it up. What we have seen from Baltimore is, or sorry, from the Dolphins, mm-hmm. is that their offense can take uh, keep up also. Right. So there is a chance that this turns into a shootout. The Bills' weakness is their secondary, so... You know, maybe two is a little interesting. Through too. two weeks, the Dolphins actually have some of the most passing yards in the NFL mm-hmm. right now, which is crazy when you think about it. it's Tua leading the charge there. Yeah, if you told me that last week or last year, I would have laughed at you. <laughs> so Josh Allen versus Tua in this one. The Bills five and mm-hmm. a half point favorites, highest game total too, five, uh, fifty-two and a half. So Vegas thinks this is going to be a high-scoring affair. That's good news for fantasy mm-hmm. owners. Taking a look now at another fantasy favorite, Justin Herbert, who is going up against the Jaguars this weekend, another highly owned quarterback in fantasy. He's got a three-star alert on Line Star. Now the Jags middle of the pack in terms of passing yards allowed. However, the teams they've faced haven't had great quarterbacks, commanders in Carson Wentz, and then you've got Indianapolis and Matt Ryan, who just has not lived Which up to billing this just season. been a dumpster fire so far. <laughs> so given that, what do you make of Justin Herbert today in fantasy? So one thing I want to bring up first is I think it's very interesting that Herbert is coming in this high owned. We know he got hurt last week. He's likely going to have some pain. He's going to probably have to have an injection mm-hmm. uh, to play through that pain this week. So it is interesting. Pay attention to ownership here because I think it really could move and it could go lower than, you know, we're calling for right now. But it's Justin Herbert. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the game. He has a ton of weapons uh, that he can throw to. And uh, Keenan Allen is back in practice this week. So I think you really do need to look at uh, uh, Herbert here versus offense that's meh or sorry, a defense that meh. They're a great offense. I like Herbert. I'm glad you mentioned the injury and then given the fact that his ownership might drop, great mm-hmm. leverage spot for you there. So, so much value from him. And another thing here is when we have two quarterbacks like Allen and Herbert coming in, you know, really high owned and high, more high owned than everybody else, the likelihood of you get getting, say, a Kirk Cousins or a Goff or some somebody that like mm-hmm. that – to outscore these guys is low. You know, like both of these guys are in good game. 
the Cousins, the Goffs, like they're going to need 350 yards and four touchdowns just because they don't have any rushing upside like Allen or Herbert or some of the other guys we might talk about. Right. So let's get to that. We're going to talk about our sleeper picks at the quarterback position for week three. Here we go. Jalen Hurts going up against the Commanders. Joe Burrow at the Jets. Patrick Mahomes at the Colts. Wow. Patrick Mahomes a low owned. Mm -hmm. Interesting to see it there. We'll start off with Jalen Hurts going up against the Commanders. Now, the Eagles. Wow. They've looked absolutely phenomenal. And Hurts mm -hmm. is having an incredible Two weeks so far. However, with all those weapons on offense, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith, they're just absolutely torching teams, including most recently the Vikings. What do you yes. like about Hurts? I mean, his up, his rushing upside is just unmatched. He is essentially another Lamar Jackson, mm -hmm. but Lamar hasn't been rushing as much as Herbert so far this season. So you've got to really love that. Uh, rushing upside and then the Washington defense just hasn't been good they haven't been able to stop anybody mm -hmm. they're allowing 1.7 uh, passing touchdowns over the last nine you add that in Hurts rushing upside maybe a rushing touchdown and you got to really like it yeah to your point commanders have allowed the 11th most fantasy points so far this season so a favorable mm -hmm. spot there for Jalen Hurts Another favorable position for a quarterback is Joe Burrow at the Jets. Very low ownership numbers with him. And uh, he does throw quite a bit of picks this season and has been having some trouble in that department. However, this Jets team did allow uh, Lamar Jackson in week one to have that huge comeback in the second half. Yeah, and they also let uh, Brissett and Amari Cooper torch him last week. Mm -hmm. The Jets came back and won. Right. Uh, but the secondary has been leaky. The quarterbacks have been able to score against him. Joe Burrow hasn't been great so far, but he's been under crazy pressure. Mm -hmm. He went against the Steelers. He went against the Cowboys. Two very good quarter or defenses right. at getting to the quarterback. I don't know if the Jets can match that intensity up front. And if he can get a little bit of time, he can absolutely torch this defense. Yeah, you're right on that. I mean, the Jets have a great secondary, mm -hmm. but where they could struggle is at that rush and getting at yep. Joe Burrow here. Exactly. Patrick Mahomes is going up against the Colts, and he's got a three-and-a-half star alert here. Now, the defense for the Colts just has not lived up to expectations at all, and this was a defense we thought would absolutely dominate. Yeah. They've got three returning Pro Bowlers, and they're allowing 22 points per game through the first two games. Yeah, I mean, the team as a whole has just been disappointing. They haven't been able to move the ball on offense. The defense mm -hmm. hasn't really been able to stop people, and they haven't faced really good teams. Right. So it is interesting. And to go even further, I'm a little interested at what the sports books are doing. This is the Colts' first game at home, so I do imagine them be better. But the fact that KC's only – uh, plus 5.5 mm -hmm. is weird to me. Like, I, I feel like they should be a bigger favorite. Right, absolutely. It's a high-scoring game. Uh, Patrick Mahomes has been much better in away games in his career. And Indy ranked 26 and allowing 36 pass attempts, almost 36 pass attempts in the last uh, nine games. So Mahomes should have to pass. Mm-hmm. We know what Mahomes can do when he's pa passing. He's better away. I think there's a lot to like about Mahomes here. And if the Colts offense can keep up and Mahomes has to pass all game long, it's a really good thing for KC. You're absolutely right. Patrick Mahomes torched the Cardinals week one, yes. went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Justin Herbert week two, which was mm -hmm. an incredible game. And we saw that offense come alive, one that we thought would take a few weeks to kind of click because they yep. have so many new pieces there and they lost Tyreek Hill. However, they haven't missed a beat at all. No, they've been fine. It And the thing is that their offense was so solely focused on Hill and Kelsey Pryor that now the fact they're able to spread the ball around makes them harder to guard. Okay. Let's go to some hard to guard running backs. We'll start with our high owned running backs in daily fantasy. And the first one we're going to talk about is Leonard Fournette 
going up against the Packers. You may remember at the beginning of the show, I said there's one player who is one of the most highly owned players, most popular this weekend in fantasy football. This is it. And we're going to tell you a little bit about why you might consider fading him. Tyler, what do you think? Yeah, so let's start off by his ownership. We have him over 40% on both DraftKings and FanDuel right now. That wide receiver room is absolutely broken right now. Nobody is practicing. Evans is suspended. They're going to go into the game with Perriman, Miller, Gage, and then Cole Beasley, who they just brought off Mm -hmm. the street. So if I'm the Packers... I am absolutely stacking the box. I'm making sure that Fournette cannot beat me. Fournette has had a huge amount of usage, so I absolutely love that. He's on the field all the time, but I think he's in a tough uh, – he has a tough task this weekend just because the Packers just need to stop him. Mm-hmm. I don't think Brady with these weapons can beat them. Not to mention the Bucks' offensive line is battered right now. So mm-hmm. in the last game against the Saints – They lost one offensive lineman. And then by the end of the game, they had three O-linemen whose total combined experience was six starts. Mm -hmm. That's what they're going with this week. And as a whole, this offense hasn't looked good so far this year. So, you know, it's really hard for me to follow 40% ownership with an offense that hasn't looked great. Yes, uh, Fournette's good. Mm -hmm. He's going to get all the opportunities. But with that type of ownership... I just can't do it. And for the Packers defense, they actually have three players who are among the top seven linebackers and D linemen in the league in terms of percentage of pass rush snaps resulting in pressure. Preston Smith, Kenny Clark, Rashawn Gary. So got his work cut out for him. And Mm -hmm. from a fantasy perspective, given the ownership is where it is, like you said, probably not worth it. Let's talk about David Montgomery going up against the Texans. Four and a half star alert for him on line star. Texans have allowed the most rushing yards to running backs with 287 after games against Colts and Broncos. What do you think about Montgomery's chances here against the Texans? So I do think Montgomery's in a good spot. He had a great workload uh, last week, but the prior week there was some questions. Everybody thought Herbert had a decent percent of the the workload there last week that wasn't the case so we don't really know which one it is Mm i i like montgomery as a rusher i like him as a player i think his price point's appropriate but i do have a hard time following chalk on a game total of 40 when you're talking about the chicago bears (laughs) you know they just aren't a good offense they're not throwing the ball. They really – defenses just need to stop the run, and then they stop the offense as a whole. Right. Even though the Texans haven't been stellar, I guess, against the run, David Montgomery, that's that offense. It's is the offense. a little bit worrisome. Yes. I know their first game was in a monsoon, but even given that, you would have thought they would have – gotten him the ball a little bit more we just yeah in their second game versus a good defense so they do need a little bit of a pass but we all know this is not going to be a great offense the game total is only 40 Mm -hmm. so your chance of multiple multiple touchdowns is extremely low Mm -hmm. which you know you kind of need that or a ton of uh just passes caught to really give you the additional points. And I don't think Montgomery is going to have a couple touchdowns. Don't think he's going to have five plus receptions. So what about the touchdown chances for Bengals running back Joe Mixon, who's at the Jets this week? Now, the Jets did allow Nick Chubb to kind of run all over them. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had a really good game last week until he scored that third touchdown, though, which he's probably regretting a little bit because they could have stopped and run the clock out there. Mm-hmm. However, he had a great game. Bodes well for Mixon this week against the Jets. I absolutely love this spot. Mixon has a huge workload. The Bengals also have some issues as far as the O-line. However, they have a quarterback and weapons that they can throw the ball to, so the Jets can't just you know, focus on mixing to try Mm -hmm. and stop him. Browns were able to run wild on him, on them. The Jets ranked 29th and allowing at least one rushing touchdown per game. Mm -hmm. So I I really do like mixing here. I think he's in a great spot. 
Uh, another guy that I like here with very similar ownership to Mixon is Dalvin Cook. I like mm-hmm. that game a lot. So. so now let's get to some lower-owned running backs, your sleeper picks, if you will. We'll get into it here with Chargers running back Austin Eckler going up against the Jacksonville Jaguars. Now, he has come on a little bit slow, mm-hmm. hasn't seen the end zone yet, but in a good matchup today. And he actually admitted to reporters recently that, hey, I'm aware that I haven't put up the numbers, but yeah. – I think that's even more of a reason and a motivation for him to come out in this game and have a good one against the Jaguars. Given the ownership is low on Eckler, Mm -hmm. what do you like about this play besides the fact that the ownership is super low? So one, we know he's an elite running back. He had like 20 touchdowns last year. The touchdowns will come. Second of all, after Herbert got hurt last game, They were checking down to Eckler nonstop. He had 10 targets. If that happens again this week and he's getting 10 plus targets, he is going to absolutely smash. And that's good news because I need to see some of that air guitar in the end zone. I picked him as my touchdown call the past two weeks. Two weeks, I know. One for Thursday night and once for Sunday. I mean, he had one every game last season practically because as you mentioned he's the receiving threat as well so yeah he's a really good back he's going to be fine if you have him in season long and you're nervous just be patient he'll turn it around you know who else is a really good back Mm -hmm. deandre swift he's going up against the vikings this week now the vikings have actually allowed 200 yards rushing to running backs through the first two games that ranks 10th worst we saw them get torched on monday night football against the eagles DeAndre Swift has had a great season so far, and we've seen the explosiveness out of the former Georgia Bulldog. (laughs) Yep, go dogs (laughs) once again here. Swift is averaging almost 10 yards per carry. It is just a crazy number. Can he keep that up? No, but he's doing it now. That O-line is really good. And to go along with that 100 yards rushing a game that you mentioned, Uh, Running backs also have six catches a game versus him. Swift is also great catching the ball. I think there's a lot of ways he can hurt the Vikings, and the Lions need him Mm -hmm. to be able to keep up with this Vikings offense. I like Swift. I like this game Mm -hmm. uh, on Sunday, and I am all for playing him. I will watch the uh, injury reports, though. He has been hampered by a little issue the last couple weeks, but he's played. So. Another player that actually went up against the Vikings had a, they all had a good showing in that game. Miles Sanders this week will be going up against the Commanders, who allow the six most rushing yards to running backs. Great spot for him this week. It's a terrific spot. His price is cheap. He is going against this Commanders team that hasn't been able to stop much. Uh, he has big playability. He can break off a long run from anywhere. And he's getting the workload. I think he had 17 touches week one. He had 20 touches last week. If he could, keeps getting that workload and he stays at this price, he's going to be smashing all season oh, long. Oh, that's awesome. Love to hear that as he's on my fantasy team. <laughs> Love to hear Cordero Patterson going up against the Seahawks because the Seahawks have allowed the seventh most rush yards mm-hmm. to running backs this season. Probably would have had more if, the Denver Broncos would have just handed the ball off to their running backs in that week one matchup where uh, Geno Smith and the Seahawks took it to Russell Wilson and his new team, the Denver Broncos. Mm -hmm. They haven't exactly been using those running backs. That's another point. But today, Cordero Patterson against the Seahawks, he's a dynamic back uh, that can kind of do it all. What do you like about him in his matchup today against the Seahawks? So I would like the Falcons use him more in the passing game. We know he can catch the ball. We know he's Mm -hmm. good receiving back. So I want to see that out of him, but the Seahawks haven't been able to stop anybody in the run game. Peter Patterson is the clear number one back. He is the best back they have. He is boom bust, but it is price. I love taking that chance for the boom Mm -hmm. because when he has a good game, it is a good game like a Dalvin cook or a Jonathan Taylor It's a really high-scoring game, so I am totally willing to take that volatility at his low ownership. So some great running back options there for you if you don't want to go with the field on that one, especially with Fournette. 
some other players that can provide some boom. We'll go over these wide receivers here. The first, the high own guys who, I mean, you got you know these names. We've got Rams, Cooper Cup, Vikings, Justin Jefferson, and the Bills, Stephon Diggs. All have pretty favorable matchups. How do you feel about this group as a whole, given their ownerships? I'm fine with all the ownerships here. All three of these guys have great matchups. They all have huge target shares. They're all very expensive, mm-hmm. but every one of them is great at what they do, and I would not be worried about ownerships. Each one's mm-hmm. a great play. Do you have a favorite? I mean, Cooper Cup. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I, it's the only guy that you can almost count on 12 receptions and a touchdown. Absolutely. There's a reason he was the first wide receiver off the board in most season-long fantasy yeah. leagues. And that he's almost like 10000 on draft games. <laughs> he's, he's expensive, but he's worth it. Worth the price tag. Let's get to some sleeper picks at the wide receiver position. First, we're going to look at the Bucks receivers as a whole because, quite frankly, mm-hmm. they're very thin there. They're going up against the Packers, though, and they give up the 10th most passing yards per game so not a bad spot for Mm -hmm. any bucks receivers really totally and we talked about the bucks receivers briefly in the fournette area they're all hurt Mm -hmm. we have evan suspended godwin hasn't practiced this week julio hasn't practiced this week so we're left with russell gage scotty miller perriman and then beasley who's off the street now gage is likely going to be high owned He isn't showing to be super high-owned yet, but as the week comes through and the guarantees of uh, Julio Godwin not playing, I think he will become high-owned. He is the most likely to be successful. But after that, I am very interested in Perriman or Miller. Mm -hmm. So Perriman has the bigger play ability. He was a first-round pick. He is a good player. He has shown flashes. Had a big game uh, towards the end of last year with when hurt guys were hurt. And then Miller, we know, has a little bit of a connection here with Brady. So I think both are interesting. Both are kind of dart throws. Um, but they both have really good upside here if uh, the Packers are making the Bucks pass. Brady can make a star wide receiver out of just about everybody and have a good week in your fantasy leagues. He has been known to do that (laughs) when he played for the Patriots. Next up, let's look at Saints wide receiver Michael Thomas. He's at Carolina this week, and Carolina allowing the ninth most passing yards this season. Carolina just hasn't looked good so far this season. Michael Thomas, on the other hand, Mm -hmm. yeah, he's looked great. Even coming off of an injury from last season, he's out there to prove it. Yeah, I mean, he has 17 targets in the last two weeks. He's pretty low priced for his ability and what we've seen from him in Mm -hmm. his career. And Carolina has issues with bigger receivers. So with all that being said, Kamara's also banged up. Thomas is a big time red zone threat. I think it's worth it. Low ownership throwing uh, some darts his way. Another wide receiver we're looking at is Bengals wide receiver, Jamar Chase at the Jets. Hey, you're going to pick on uh, DJ Reed and Sauce Gardner in this one, huh? Sure am. <laughs> what do you like about this play in Daily Fantasy? That being said, I also like T. Higgins. <laughs> Just extra pick on, pick on him. Uh, but look, he, we have a five-star alert rating for him. Amari Cooper just went nuts. Burrow Mm -hmm. and Chase can absolutely match that. And the Jets as a whole, they're just meh. You know, the Ravens receivers went off. I I don't think that pass defense is very good. And Chase is great. And when he's going this low owned (laughs) with Joe Burrow as his quarterback, it is very interesting to me, especially when it's against a bad defense. Yeah. Got to take a look at it. Mm -hmm. Shots fired, though, at my Jets this week. Sure (laughs) is. We might talk about them later, though, in a positive way. All right. I'll take it. Now let's take a look at our tight ends. We'll start off with our high-owned tight ends, and we're looking at Irv Smith Jr. going up against the Lions. Now, top 10 in fantasy points allowed to tight ends. Mm -hmm. There's our Lions. What... Do you make of Irv Smith Jr.? Now, he was recovering from a thumb injury week one, 
-hmm. However, week two, his routes run rate increased 60%. Yeah, and Cousins was looking for him. We know he... Uh, we know he's a very athletic guy. He was getting some target share. He's still really cheap, so you gotta like that. Uh, I have a hard time ever following, you know, thirty plus own percent people. So on DraftKings, I might think about going somewhere else, but uh, I like him. Let's take a look now at Tyler Higby, who's on my fantasy team. I picked him up because George Kittle was hurt, and it's been a pretty good decision Might still for me. Be hurt. <laughs> and it is crazy the target share that that Higby's getting. He just keeps getting uh, targeted, game in and game out. That keeps going. You have to really like him. He is in a good matchup. I like Higby. Next up is Zach Ertz, Cardinals tight end going up against the Rams in this one. Given ownership is a little high, are you going there in this one? So his ownership is high on FanDuel. On DraftKings at 9%, it's not too bad. On FanDuel, I would probably go elsewhere. I don't love him. Uh, but he is getting a lot of targets. So I am interested in him. Do I absolutely love it? No. But... <laughs> you know that was not a ringing endorsement I, Tyler <laughs> you know he had like 11 targets last week mm -hmm. so if you're a tight end and you're lower priced like that alone is enough to garner in interest let's take some interest in our sleeper pick at tight end we're looking at Kyle Pitts going up against the Seahawks mm -hmm. now his head coach said He's about due for a breakout, and fantasy owners everywhere are hoping that is the case. Just four receptions for 38 yard yards for his first two games hasn't been there for fantasy owners. However, today could be a good matchup. Yeah, and I talked about him as a low-owned last week. He just has not been there yet, mm -hmm. but he is super low this week. He's going against the Seahawks. Seahawks rank 32nd in touchdowns allowed to the tight end over the last nine mm -hmm. games. And they're 28th in receiving yards. So the matchup is there. We know his athletic ability is there. We know he can catch passes. It's just a matter of the Falcons getting him the ball. And I think it will happen. Pitts, once he goes, he's going to go nuts. <laughs> That's for sure. So. I mean, he's a very talented tight end there. Mm -hmm. Former Florida kid, though. Yeah. You don't it's know okay. about them. <laughs> we know a little bit about the Gators as Georgia fans. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at defenses. We'll talk about our high-owned defenses and then get into some sleeper picks. First, we're looking at the Panthers. They're at this. They're going up against the Saints in this one, and the Seahawks going up against the Falcons. Both very middle of the pack uh, through two games. Are you interested in either of these teams? So the one thing we know with defense is it is extremely hard to project defensive points. So when you come to the highest owned defenses, I'm likely to go the other way. I don't love the Panthers versus the Saints. I don't love the Seahawks versus anybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Fair enough. <laughs> Let's take a look now at our low owned teams for the day. And uh, what do we see here? J-E-T-S. Call me crazy. <laughs> Going up against the Bengals. Now, this is a Bengals offense that has struggled mm -hmm. out of the gate. What's the play here from a daily fantasy perspective? So we talked about Burrow getting sacked earlier, and that is an issue for mm -hmm. the Cincinnati Bengals. If that is continues happen, to happen this week, the Jets have a great floor. We know Burrow will throw interceptions. One of those could go back for a touchdown. And if he's getting sacked, you know, it's just raising that floor of a defense and they're super cheap. So I don't mind the Jets. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's okay. It's, it's a, a nice, little crazy, but it's a nice leverage situation. I, I mean, if yeah. the Bengals aren't doing it, it's almost like a prove it. You haven't done it yet. Let's see it. And look, most of the time, a defense that is in the winning lineup or in the optimal lineup is one of the cheaper cheaper defenses. Mm -hmm. They never look pretty. You just got to take your shot. Next up, we're looking at the Texans. Mm -hmm. They are at the Bears, who haven't scored more than 10 points in their first two games. Mm -hmm. So not a bad spot for the Texans. 
And that's really the thing is that the Bears offense has been anemic. Justin Fields, not really crazy about him. We have a super low scoring game here. So there's a chance here the Texans can score. They're also very cheap. I would have had the Bears in here also, but the Bears are more of an expensive defense. So I don't really want to pay that price. We don't want to pay it. Mm -mm. We're trying to get some bargains here. Yep. How about the bargain of the Eagles at the Commanders? Mm -hmm. Eagles held the Vikings to just seven, and we know what the Vikings offense is capable of with Justin Jefferson, Adam Thielen. They got some playmakers, yep. Dalvin Cook. So what do you make of the Eagles? Yeah, we know Wentz will make mistakes. He is uh, interception <laughs> prone. He likes to throw the ball to the other team. So you got to like the chances of a pick, especially with Darius Slay, how he's been playing. Just shut down Jefferson. He can absolutely shut down one of these uh, Washington wide receivers. So that is a look at your sleeper picks on defense and all of your picks for today. You can find all of this information that we just talked about today at linestarapp.com. Make sure to lock in your subscription so you can dominate in daily fantasy. Linestarapp.com, $29.99 per month. It's worth every penny because you'll it'll help you win some money in all these contests. Plus, it has <laughs> Props Edge, which is a great tool that'll help you dominate in prop betting. We have Underdog. And we also have prize picks and the sports books. So it gives you the best edge in terms of our projections. And it's a great tool. So. Yeah, you can clearly research any angle you want mm -hmm. and look at our projections, see all the stats and figure out your advantage. Even if you just want to be a smarter sports fan and, you know, works do too. a little research. It's cheap enough where <laughs> it makes sense. All right, now it's time for our touchdown calls of the game. Tyler, who you got for an anytime touchdown in week three? I'm picking on your Jets, and I am going Jamar Chase. He is electric. This Jets defense will not be able to stop him. Jamar is getting into the end zone. <laughs> All right. I am going Amon Ra St. Brown, one of the most underrated wide receivers in the NFL right now. And he's going up against the Minnesota Vikings in this one, who've allowed the fourth most passing yards through two weeks. Torched by the Eagles, Devontae Smith, Quez Watkins, and A.J. Brown. St. Brown has had three touchdowns this season, and he was the 17th wide receiver taking, taken off the board back in the 2021 NFL draft. And he said last year that he wants all the coaches that passed him on the draft board mm -hmm. to regret it. He's on a revenge tour. Yeah, he made a comment after last game about Deami Brown. He's going to make him pay. Yep. <laughs> I, I really do like Brown this week and almost talked about him, but he's kind of in between the high and the low own this mm -hmm. week. But he is a beast. And if ownership doesn't go there, I absolutely will be. Anytime touchdown for him is plus money, plus 105. Mm -hmm. So not a bad play to sprinkle a little bit of money on in the sports books. I like it. So for all of that information, again, find it at linestarapp.com and use our props edge tool, our lineup optimizer. Just do your research, one-stop shop mm -hmm. for all of your research. Good luck to you this weekend in daily fantasy, season-long fantasy. Go crush your prop bets and your sports bets this weekend. Thanks for watching. Drop a comment if you have any questions. We'll see you guys next time. Have a good one, guys. Bye.